I'm going to uh, start first, right? I think the first session is why study economics? Yes. Right. So over to the faculty members. We'll be behind the scenes. Over to you, Avinash, uh, uh, Sunit, and uh, Shivali. Okay. Should I continue? Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good evening. Uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. I am Avinash Tripathi. I am part of Economics Group uh, at Ajim Premji University, Bhopal campus. Okay. And uh, for a few minutes, I am going to talk about why study economics. Okay. So basically, uh, why, uh, how you are going to benefit from studying economics as a student. Okay. So uh, basically, for me, because I am an economist, the question basically is why not study economics? Okay. So I can think of so many uh, reasons for studying economics, but uh, the main reason that attracted me to the study of economics, and I think uh, that should appeal to you, is that it sort of combines different worlds, okay? So it is sort of bridge between humanities and sciences, okay? So let us say that there is some problem that you are trying to approach, okay? There are different ways of thinking about it, okay? So you can think of it, uh, it more uh, logical, analytical, and quantitative way, you can also think of it uh, in a broader perspective. You can think of the problem as occurring in a specific particular context, okay? And both ways of looking at a problem, they are sort of uh, available in economics, okay? So if you are studying economics, for example, then you are exposed to a number of techniques. You will be learning mathematics. You will be learning statistics. You will be learning data analysis. You will be learning. Uh, you will be learning computer programming. Okay, so all these things, this rigorous training, in some sense, it allows you to think analytically, to to think quantitatively about a particular subject, and that is one particular way of looking at the problems. There is another one, and uh, let us say that you want to study a particular uh, problem in its historical context. Okay, you want to understand. Uh, the social context in which a particular uh, problem appears, okay? Even then, uh, economics has that component also, okay? So you can think of economics as a kind of straddling the field of humanities and the field of sciences. Uh, both ways of thinking, both ways of approaching a problem, they are part of the toolkit of economics. And actually, uh, one of the greatest economists uh, was John Maynard Keynes, and he once said uh, that an economist is someone, I am going to quote him, an economist is someone who can understand symbols and speak in words. Okay, so what I, uh, does it mean? It means that an economist is someone who can understand the problem uh, in its logical uh, quantitative aspect. And at the same time, they should internalize it so well that they should be articulate the nuances of the problem so that people are able to understand, people are able to uh, sort of fairly uh, get the gist of uh, everything, okay? So this is basically uh, the most appealing part of economics for me. And apart from this particular aspect, which is uh, sort of intellectually uh, appealing to me, there are also different ways, uh, different benefits of studying economics, okay? For example, it allows you, it, the subject of economics, it allows you to become better decision maker, okay? So let us say you are running business or you are joining a business as an employee, you are joining a government organization, you are joining, uh, let us say, uh, you are just participating in the political process as, as a citizen, it gives you some sort of tools that allow you to become a better analyst, to become better decision makers. So this is uh, the second appeal of economics to me, okay? And the third one, and I think uh, my colleagues they are going to talk about it in detail. The third one is that economics has got a really great employment potential, okay? So uh, let us say that you want to join government organizations. Let us say that you want to join uh, public sector. Let us say that you want to join private sector, whether uh, you want to join for profit sector, whether you want to join non-profit sector, uh, not for profit sector, whether you want to join research, your 
training as an economist that is going to be valued by all okay so uh, basically you can in terms of your probability of getting uh, gainful and decent employment in terms of uh, your remuneration package and a number of uh, ways uh, the field of economics is going to help you immensely okay so uh, these are the two or three uh, different things which uh, i think should appeal to you as a student who is just graduating from the plus 2 and looking forward to a, uh, an advanced uh, degree so first of all economics is a subject it, it sort of straddles the world of sciences and humanities so it gives you perspective as well as a very rigorous way of looking at things that is number 1 number 2 uh, it also allows you to become a bit better decision maker in your life whether as a citizen whether as a business person whether uh, as an employee or whatever and the third one is that it is going to have a very good employment potential it is going to give you a uh, very good chances to uh, gainfully uh, employed and uh, contribute productively uh, and whatever okay so these were the two three things i had in mind which uh, why economics should appeal to you and now i think my colleague should take this uh, discussion forward thank you uh thank you avinash uh hi everyone i'm sunit i'm an assistant professor of economics at the bhopal campus of azim premji university uh now choosing to study economics i believe is an easy decision in the current times a degree in economics is usually associated with multiple career options and some of the highest paying jobs in the world today however what you should consider very carefully is the kind of economics program you would want to be a part of now uh, i'm going to speak very briefly about our vision for the teaching and learning process in the field of economics and our economics program uh the ba program uh, at our university is, a, is uniquely designed to equip students of economics with a mix of theoretical knowledge and technical skills which will then help them engage with a range of economic issues and challenges uh now there are several things that we do very differently in our undergraduate classrooms and i want to mention a few of them for us economics is essentially a discipline that helps us understand and unpack the world around us so uh studying and teaching economics especially in the countries of global south cannot be done in isolation from its real world applications as much as possible we try to use the space of the classroom to engage with the economic challenges and puzzles that we see all around us we have a range of electives and core courses which will expose you to different thoughts in the field of economics or different kinds of economics uh we aim to provide you with quantitative and analytical tools to start thinking about some of the contemporary economic challenges and then use evidence to analyze them a very important part of economics today is its engagement with data in a lot of our courses we use data from indian economy to try to make sense of our economic realities uh we often rely on data from surveys on consumer expenditure employment credit budget census etc in a lot of our courses and we equip and expect our students to work with these data sets upon completion of this program students should be able to read interpret and analyze data policy and reports more often than not also the newspaper articles that we see every day coming uh, based on numbers for us entry to econ to an economics program is not dependent on your proficiency in mathematics so for example you've not studied maths after class 10th or you've not done very well in mathematics that's perfectly fine however knowledge of maths is essential to studying economics at the undergrad level and even later on and we'll do our best to help you overcome your fear of numbers and use quantitative skills with ease we visualize our classrooms as inclusive spaces where we encourage students drawn from different backgrounds as well as with different skill sets to come together and collaborate in the pursuit of knowledge we encourage close interactions between faculty members and students and our aim is to keep the classroom atmosphere friendly and relaxed we also emphasize on learning through debates and discussions within the space of the classroom so we often use the class time to start provocative discussions on different economic challenges that we are facing and these are mostly open ended discussions uh there are various kinds of academic support which are available to our students to help them transition from school to the university learning 
As part of the undergraduate economics program at Azim Premji University, we provide you the academic tools and skills which will help you unpack your lived realities and engage with them with sensitivity and insight. Our curriculum combines rigorous quantitative training and qualitative research methods. We also engage with and deliberate on the problems of development in the global south through a mix of theory and data analysis. Our ultimate aim is to equip our students with a strong theoretical base in core subjects, at the same time expose them to real-world economic challenges so that they are able to critically engage with larger issues of growth, development, and distribution. Uh, I invite you all to look at our website for further details, but now Shuli will tell us in brief about the specific content of our program. Um, see you all uh, soon at our campus. Ah, thanks, uh, Sunit. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Shuli. Uh, like uh, Sunit, uh, I also teach, Sunit and Avinash, I also teach economics at, uh, um, at the undergraduate level in our Bhopal campus. Um, and um, uh, both Avinash and Sunit uh, talked about why study economics and why study economics specifically at Azim Premji University. Uh, I am going to talk uh, briefly about uh, the uh, the economics program, how we have uh, envisaged that, uh, and uh, also briefly about the other components of the undergraduate program. So. Um, uh, um, can I uh, share my screen, uh, Chandrakant, or uh, is it, uh, can you uh, allow Yes, you me? can share. Okay. You are a host, you can share. Yeah, okay, thanks. You share your screen. Okay, you have... yeah. thanks. Okay, uh, so um, the uh, this uh, uh, Sunit uh, has already talked about, but uh, basically um, uh, people have spent a lot of time uh, 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 and designed a curriculum, uh, which um, is on one part, gives you uh, a training and knowledge of all the uh, uh, important component of uh, economics uh, courses, which are taught other places as well right so there are courses in uh, economic theory uh, micro macro uh, theory and then um, uh, uh, econometrics which you will see in other places which allows you to uh, understand and learn how to deal with data uh, uh, and and how do you run programs to draw a meaningful conclusion out of data uh, but at the same time uh, we are also uh, uh interested in in developing the intuition of economics right so so you can learn how to deal with data you can learn about different theoretical models um uh and and uh, in the micro context or in the macro context uh but um uh, how, how do you base uh, these understandings or how, how do you develop your understanding of economics based on uh, what has happened in the past and what is happening right now um, uh, so uh, we uh, uh, we teach that uh, we also teach uh, how do you uh, 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 communicate these ideas effectively uh, uh, once you have learned and understood and developed an intuition for economics so these are the set of compulsory courses they are spread over uh, the first three years uh, which are six semesters uh, um, introduction to economics one uh, is is basically uh, uh, introduction to microeconomics. Introduction to economics two is introduction to macroeconomics, uh, and they are in the first year. Uh, then introduction to statistics and programming. So uh, basic uh, statistics and uh, programming in R, uh, which is a statistical software. Uh, in the second year, uh, then we do slightly advanced level of micro and macro. Uh, along with political economy. So as Sunit was saying earlier, uh, that uh, our uh, program is very different and deliberately different 
uh, from uh, other uh, universities because political economy is not something which a course which you will find everywhere right but the idea is that this most of the economic policies uh, uh, which are made and implemented and which affect our di lives directly uh, are um, uh, based in this political sphere and uh, it's important to have an understanding of how uh, a political economy works how uh, a certain things get into uh, uh, and are made into policies while certain things don't, right? Uh, then we have introduction to econometrics. Um, so you need advanced econometrics to uh, do meaningful uh, uh, use of, uh, to learn how to do meaningful uh, use of data and uh, draw interpretations. Then uh, you, you would see economic history and history of economic thought. These are also two courses which you will not find in other uh, curriculum, but they are part of our uh, compulsory courses. Everybody has to do it. And the idea is that you cannot uh, be a good economist if you don't have an understanding of what has happened in the past and why. Um, uh, uh, specifically, uh, major economic events uh, in the history. Uh, and history of economic thought basically talks about how um, uh, economics itself has developed, right? Uh, what were the classical thinkers thinking, how it moved to neoclassical thinkers and so on. Uh, and then uh, Indian economy uh, is also an, a compulsory course. Um, it uh, tells you again about uh, uh, different things which has happened in, in India, uh, in, in the economic history of India, and also how planning has happened, how we have uh, 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 thought of economic development, what sort of steps we have taken after independence and, and so on. Uh, then these are some of the elective courses. Uh, so set of elective courses uh, is, is an open list. It changes a little bit depending on uh, who is offering it, but there are certain courses which we think are important to offer as electives. So development economics, game theory, uh, money banking and finance, again, feminist economics, this is another course which you will not easily find in another economics program. Uh, economics of climate change, uh, uh, applied econometrics, uh, economic growth, computational economics, uh, uh, ed, um, economics of education, and so on. Uh, the other parts of the undergraduate program are, uh, which is, uh, there is a substantial part which is called common curriculum courses. Uh, we have three courses in understanding India. Uh, one based in history of India, the second based on the, the social and political reality of India, and third based in the uh, the environmental conflict uh, or the, the issues related to climate change in India. Then we have two courses in critical reading and writing, which is essentially to develop your reading and writing abilities. Then we have one in public reasoning, which will teach you how, how do you make arguments, how do you make good arguments. Uh, and then uh, courses in creative expression, uh, which uh, uh, can be music, theater, art, pottery making, and so on. And all the common curriculum courses are compulsory as well. Everybody has to do it. Uh, uh, then uh, in the uh, starting the third year, so the program is of four years duration, um, you have an option of doing a thesis. Uh, so you can choose a research topic and work under a supervisor uh, and... and uh, 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 write uh, thesis uh, on a chosen topic uh, on on an economics uh, on a chosen topic within economics, or you can do an internship uh, with an organization um, uh, for uh, almost a year, more than a year. Uh, the other so this this is these are the com components which are essential for economics major, uh, but along with that. The undergraduate program um, requires you to do an occupational minor. So the, the idea is that these minors are, are something which would, would enhance your skills or abilities in a particular uh, area and will be useful for you to get jobs. So data development, democracy, media and journalism, conservation are some examples which we'll be offering in Bhopal. Um, and along with this, you can also do a, a minor in another discipline. Uh, which could be English, social science, history, or bio in the in the um, Bhopal campus. Uh, and then briefly, I will talk about uh, uh, job opportunities. Uh, so Avinash talked a little bit about that. Uh, but um, uh, uh, I uh, in the Bangalore campus, and I was part of the, the economics program there before I uh, moved to Bhopal, uh, we have seen our uh, students do many, many different things, right? Uh, uh, so you can, of course, there are many students who have gone and done uh, MA or MSc in economics in India or abroad, both in, in Europe and in, in America. Uh, so that is always an, an option. And our students are very competitive. So they, they are on par with, uh, with uh, students from anywhere else in the world. 
so that is one option. You can also, many students have gone and uh, prepared for ISC or IES, uh, Indian Economic Services, that's an option. Um, you can also go and work in government uh, institutes uh, or with the government. So there are students who have gone and started working with the government. Uh, you can also go and work with with think tanks, uh, policy think tanks, uh, research institutes, uh, and you can also go and work with um, social sector organizations, uh, with NGOs or or with big uh, institutes like SEWA, uh, uh, which are doing different kind of works uh, uh, in in the public area. Uh, so these are some of the the uh, options which you can do. Uh, and uh, we have seen uh, that uh, all, all of our students go to very good places and, and they send photos there, which is, which is very uh, uh, encouraging and gratifying to see. Uh, I think I'll stop here. And uh, then if anyone has questions, uh, we can take it later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think, I think, uh, uh, the audience could have got a good summary of how the economics program is, is structured. I mean, you should, if you heard uh, Shivali very carefully, uh, you could combine your major economics with, with a minor, could be in the area of data science, but we're not calling it data science, we call it uh, data in the context of India, right? Data, democracy, and development. And then there is a set of common curriculum courses, uh, which will give you the sensibilities or the skills that you need at the workplace or the skills for the 21st century. And uh, we could take questions now. We This is deliberately intended as a, a short talk and uh, where we could answer many of your questions. I think yesterday when we did, there were a lot of questions on the admission process, selection process. Uh, we could look at that also. But I would request if uh, to ask questions on the, the discipline itself. If you, if you have any questions, I think one point that Sunit made is quite it's, it's quite relevant for today's talk that, of course, there is mathematics in the economics program, but we're not looking at that you should have done maths in 11th and 12th. That's not a, that's not mandated to study economics at Azim Prime University. Yeah, Kiran, I think, thank you. If you raise your hand there, uh, that makes it much more easier. Uh, otherwise, if you want to type in the chat window, you could do that also. Kiran and Pradeep and Shalini, yeah, in that order, we'll go. Uh, apart from the thesis in the final year, are there any student research opportunities to? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, quickly, before I forget, uh, I mean, my colleagues could answer. In the final year, that is in the fourth year of the uh, fourth year of your study, it's an honors program, right? You are you're already joining as an honors program. But in the fourth year, in the final year, you make a choice whether you want to take the research pathway or the internship pathway, right? And uh, <clears throat> so anybody wants to add on to the kind of... Uh research there. So is that a question, Kiran? Did I get you right? My question was, apart from the thesis in the fourth year, will we have opportunities to write papers or anything else during our other years in the same terms? Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I, should I respond? Please do, please do, please yeah. do. Yeah, hi, hi. Thanks, uh, Kiran, for that question. So um, uh, the thesis or the internship part is mandatory. Um, so you have to, and that starts in the third year. Uh, but um, apart from that, uh, you can always, or students can always do independent research uh, with a faculty members. Uh, uh, of course, it's, uh, it's called uh, uh, individual projects. And it's not uh, credited uh, in that way, uh, but uh, uh, based on understanding between the student and the supervisor, if they or the faculty member, if they find something which is interesting, uh, uh, it's always possible. And uh, students uh, have done that with economics faculty at Bangalore. So we are uh, the same thing applies for Bhopal as well. So if there are students who are interested and we are interested in the same topic, uh, we can start working together, but will not be counted for credits. Right. Pradeep, what's your question? Sir, am I audible? I am Pradeep Singer. Yeah. Sir, my question is that can we take, uh, if my major is economics, can I take minor as biology? First question, sir. Just confirming. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the, the Bhopal has got a, a biology. So, uh, kind of, uh, if, if the courses that are declared as part of the flexible courses, not all courses in biology may not be available. Some, some there's a background noise. I don't know. If, uh, some courses in biology may require some kind of a prerequisite that you would have done this course in biology. But 
uh, that's possible right shivli they could they could do economics yeah so uh, the minor will have a set of five courses in biology in a particular sequence uh, in order to do bio minor you can always do it you will have to clear the the all the courses to move to the next course in that sequence so you have to do a set of five courses to get bio minor and it's possible and uh, just to add pradeep uh, just before i forget this will be outside of your occupational minor occupational minor is mandatory right which uh, there were the three options in bhopal that we were offering that she would just explain media and journalism data democracy and development plus uh, conservation uh, outside of that you can do biology minor also so it will be like one major with uh, two minors yeah sir i want to know ki the degree which i will be getting as a that will be as a major in economics and minor in biology that means opportunity will be there on biology side also if i want to opt for in for after graduation and the 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 degree she will can keep in the degree is going to be in your major huh? the first uh, thing but i didn't understand the question the degree is going to be for your uh, honors in economics in economics and in my and that means uh, uh, means i want to know ki whether i can avail the career opportunities if i take minor and as a biology if i do not get um, do not take this economics portion suppose i'll answer I after i think she will want to say something i'll answer after that i'll answer after that yeah yeah i'll answer after she will so uh, uh, pradeep it will depend on what kind of things you are looking for right let's say you you are going to do something which is uh, 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 which would for which your bio minor knowledge would be sufficient or the the skills would be sufficient then yes yes of course you can avail that opportunities but it will not be the same as doing a bio uh, major because as rajgopal was saying there are many courses in bio or specialization in bio which will not be available for a minor sequence so you can avail opportunities but only those which, for which the five courses in minor bio minor will be sufficient okay ma'am ma'am career opportunities will be there for matlab if i take in bioeconomics career opportunities in biology i can can i opt for that can i, can, yeah. <laughs> can I yeah, just yeah rajgopal yes i'll just i'll just come in uh, based on see uh it depends on which courses in biology you do right so to, let me explain so biology the way we look at it can range from personal health to planetary health so after doing okay. economics and biology in some courses you may be ready to work in in the area of say health economics for example you may do a, a ecosystem related courses then you may say that i want to do a pg in ecological economics so how it will pan out it is it is very difficult for us to really tell you what what the career journey and that's the beauty of this program huh? there are career options but what path will flow will depending on the interest that you develop here at azim prem university okay sir so that yeah. means uh, sir can you tell ki minor uh, along with major in economics which will be the best option for minor sir is it data science or some but some other right uh, because uh, 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 i am i a first you come and then we'll give you all sort of advice what yeah, to do yeah, yeah. because uh, jab tak aap aayenge nahi aapka interest kya hai uh, wo jab tak hame pata nahi chalega right. abhi is stage pe advice karna ki kya aapke liye behtar hoga uh, that's a little difficult for us you know once you are yeah. here you can also go and talk to bio faculty right they will also be able to give you an idea of what happens when you do bio minor which my sense is as more ecology based right it uh, so specialization in ecology fields not so much on um uh, uh, molecular biology or yeah. biochemistry right yeah. so uh, uh, once you are here then uh, there will be mentors academic advisors all those people who are part of the system to whom you can talk to and you can also of course talk to economic faculty and bio faculty okay thank you ma'am we'll go to shalini's question question then uh, sri venkata hasni yeah good evening sir uh, good evening sir hi shalini yes what's your question Uh, sir actually i have got honors in english sir i have selected for english honors but i am interested to take economics as my honor subject is there any opportunity that i can choose economics as my honor subject sir um, i didn't quite understand do you want to change your major from economics to english, english to economics no no english to economics yes sir yes sir. i have selected for english honors Yeah. So, what's you want to change the major now? 
Yes, sir. I have asked this so many times, uh, this question so many times, but I didn't right. get replaced. I'll tell you what to do. You have to log into your applicant portal, right? If you can chat to my, send a question to my colleague Chandrakant or Anu, we will send you, uh, you have to log into your applicant portal. That is admission.azimpremjuniversity.edu.in. You'll see an option called race a query, R-A-I-S-E, race a query. And there you mention, I would like to change my major. And here to do, it's pretty fast, I think. I'm, I'm not even sure whether they're allowing. But Sir, that actually, a, a madam from that uni uh, uh, Bangalore campus said that uh, uh, all the seats are vacancy uh, of uh, economics uh, is filled. We cannot view. She said oh, like you're, select you're somebody selected for round one, is it? Sir, I have selected for round one and I finished round two also, sir. I couldn't come for campus day and... Uh, uh, because I'm second PC, sir, I'm having board exams in upcoming week on March 5. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. I think I misunderstood. So, you are somebody selected for the first round? Ha, sir. First round is also over. I have written the national entrance uh, test. Correct. So, so, what's the question? And, uh, I also cleared the interview. Right. So, what's sir, the question? Sir, when I Sir, my question is, I have got my honor subject as in English, sir. Right. But I wanted to take uh, economics, sir. I, my first preference was economics, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me explain. If we were, if it was possible for us to offer economics, we would have done that already. If you're given you English as, uh, that could have been your second preference. That means there was the seats in economics were taken. So we could not offer you economics. So what you could do is you could appear again for round two and see if you can get a better score in economics. Or maybe, right? We can't change it now. Right? We can't change it now. No, I didn't, I, I couldn't hear you, but the, you can't change the major now. I'm sorry, your voice is breaking for me. Maybe it could be my line. I'll have to go to the next question now. Can you can you ask it on chat? Uh, okay, with sir. Chandrakant or, this, uh, or uh, yeah. So, uh, Sri Venkata okay, Hasni, what's your question? Hasni? Yeah, I don't know whether it's my line. I'm not able to hear uh, the question. Should I'm also not. No, I'm also not able to. Okay. Mm, not really. It's still breaking, Hasni. I'm not able to hear you. Sir, now? Better. Uh, sir, uh, I want, my future aim is to become a civil servant. So I want to prepare for UPSC along with the BA economics uh, honors for the four years. So will I get sufficient time for preparing for UPSC along with uh, the economics program? How good are you in time management? So she will be mm, saying no. No, no. <laughs> it's a very rigorous program. Yeah. Uh, uh, you can uh, uh, maybe read something along with it, but like full preparation as required by IES uh, or IES programs, that's not possible. And I, I'm also uh, uh, like I've seen it. I had students in Bangalore who uh, told me that they wanted to, but they could not. So nobody will stop you from doing it, but the program will be so rigorous that you won't get time. So generally people take a break. Uh, after the uh, program uh, and uh, for one year and then prepare and give the uh, exams. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, this is not a uh, exam-based preparation year, right? There's no final one exam in the semester. There's nothing of that sort. So it's, there's always assessment, reading, writing, thinking going on throughout the semester. We'll go to the next one. Vimala, your question? Vimala Ang, you can unmute and ask the question. Uh, we can't hear you, Vimala. I'll go to Laya then. Laya, what's your question while we're waiting for Vimala? Uh, hi, I have two questions actually. Uh, my first one was, uh, how many electives can one take up? How many? Electives, yeah. Right, you're talking, talking about electives within the... Within the, yeah, within the, the major, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Sunit, uh, Avinash, or 
Shivali, you want to answer? So, uh, there are a set of uh, required electives, uh, which I think around five or so, five or six in numbers, which you have to take, but you can always take extra electives. So, uh, uh, and that is fine. Uh, but I, I think there are around five to six electives which you have to take. Okay, I see. Uh, I have one more question. Um, how do you suggest one to go about preparing for the entrance exam? The NEP is the quality. Preparing for the entrance exam? Our entrance exam? Yes. Uh, so, yeah, that, so, I think, yeah, we will put the sample question papers. My colleagues are there, Chandrakant or Anup can give you the sample question paper. There are plenty. First, you should understand the selection test pattern. And then uh, okay. we will also, there are also sample papers that you can practice. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, hey, good evening. This is uh, Vimla here. Can I, can I ask a question now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, please. Uh, uh, good evening. I just wanted to understand. If my kid wants to do MS in financial mathematics, and uh, right now UG, if she opts for uh, BSc, uh, BA economics, uh, will the depth of mathematics uh, be sufficient for her? Mm -hmm. Can you can you yeah. answer the question? Um, uh, yeah. Did you understand the question? I, I have. Yeah, financial yeah. mathematics. So um, uh, our course is so the core courses are. Uh, as mathematical as anywhere else, but they are not specializing in that. Uh, but there will be some courses in the electives which the, the student can take. Um, uh, to, for example, mathematical models in economics, there is this one course as elective which they can take. Um, the, the only thing is we don't, um, and if they want to do pure maths course, um, that we will not be able to offer right now in Bangalore, uh, in Bhopal. Because we don't have a maths uh, major. So, so with the with the with the depth of content what you have right now, uh, my my doubt is, will the kid be able to handle uh, financial mathematics when she takes in in her uh, PG? So that's what I'm saying. So as oh, it will be as rigorous as in mathematics as much as needed in economics, but not specializing in. A mathematical this thing so yeah. uh, that should be like the base should be fine but then much more extra if the kid wants they might have to do separately but as oh. i said they can do like mathematical ma models in in economics which is a uh, elective and they can study on their own and take help from uh, faculty members and uh, 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 my second question would be ma'am uh, uh, bangalore and bhopal together uh, like you know for round two how many seats are left in ba economics yeah so <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't know because the acceptance are just coming in. Okay. Acceptance are just coming in. But I can, when economics, we are starting with a small, I mean, the good part about Azim Prince University, the way I see is draw small classes of 30, 35 or maximum 40, right? So, uh, so it's too early for us to say, but I don't, I don't think you should worry too much about how many seats remaining. Uh, but yeah, economics is quite sought after for some reason. So yeah, if you're applying for economics, I would always suggest give your second preference also. Got it. Got it. it Thanks. Be, thank you. It could be a social science in Bhopal. Yeah. Thank you. Just and, to uh, add to what Shuli was saying, there are also yeah. courses on computation and economics and econometrics, which would also sort of give you a, a more exposure to mathematics. So I think it should be fine to pursue a master's later on in financial. Got it, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Who's next? I think it's Siddharth. Uh, Siddharth had a question. I think. Yeah, uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah. 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 So I have just one question. Like, yeah. as per my yeah. very basic knowledge, uh, can you please elaborate on econometrics? Because I have a follow up question after that. On what does econometrics teach the applied yes. econometrics co course? Yes. Are you studying economics now yes. in 11th yes. center? Yes. Right. Okay. Right. 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 Okay. Okay. Right. okay. I will leave it to the experts to answer that question here. Yeah. When well, that's that's a, that's one of the issues of. Uh, high school or higher secondary economics education in the country. But over to you, Shiv, or Sunit, or Avinash, yeah. I don't see him. Yeah, I don't know what yeah. So, uh, econometrics basically is uh, uh, using statistics and more advanced things in statistics to, which teaches you how do you deal with data, right? So, we, uh, a large, like a whole stream within economics deals with data, 
which is called empirical uh, economics and uh, you draw conclusions right so in order to draw conclusions on samples which are drawn from the real world uh, what are the different uh, rules which apply um, and uh, how do you know that what you are doing is uh, and you can make a clip so for example if i want to say air pollution is causing uh, asthma in kids in in delhi right uh, how do I know that based on the data which I have, I can uh, with sufficient confidence or, or with, with I can say that, yes, this is the case, right? And econometrics uh, 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 is a division within uh, economics which uses maths as well as statistics and more advanced things which are specifically developed in econometrics to which allows you to answer these questions uh, and, and make a claim uh, which will be accepted by others. Uh, thank you, Professor. I have just one follow-up question. Uh, if I'm not wrong, applied econometrics is one of the uh, electives, right? Disciplinary yes. electives, right? Yes. So, uh, would it be yes. possible for you to like weigh in on what is the main difference or the differential category between applied econometrics and data and democracy? Like, what is the main differentiating factor? Data and democracy yes. is a occupational minor, which is a set of five courses. Uh, Sunit, do you want to comment on that? Or Aminash? Uh, yeah. 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 So in data and democracy, you will be doing uh, a set of five courses. The first one will look at how can we, how can we use data available in the public domain to sort of analyze uh, the public policies and to sort of think of alternative uh, policies. The other courses will talk about statistical programming and coding. So we will be learning R and other things. Uh, in applied econometrics, you'll actually be using the uh, theoretical and statistical knowledge to actually make models and run them. And in reality, we'll be using existing data and collect and also trying to um, uh, send you on the field to actually learn the process of data collection. In econometrics, applied econometrics, you will not be uh, needed to go on the field at all. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Janvi, and then Bindu, yes. and then Kiran, yeah. Yes. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Uh, I have three questions. First is the curriculum that you just displayed on the screen for uh, VA Economics Honours. Is this the same in the for the Bangalore and the Bhopal campus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So the major and occupational minor, you could do research or internship. It is flexible credits. There is common curriculum. That's the same. Okay. And the and, courses, uh, the core courses are exactly the same as uh, Bangalore campus. The electives, yeah. the set of electives which I've shown uh, are, is a pool of uh, 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 courses. So we'll be offering some, we might be adding some new ones, but the core courses are exactly the same. Okay. Do you also offer environmental science? I, I think it was there, hmm. as a, which, which is there in the Bangalore campus. I yeah, it's not there right now in yeah. Bhopal. But we have a conservation OT, um, which is uh, uh, which have set of five courses uh, in conservation, uh, which are which are using things from bio as well as from environment science, but not exactly environment science. Okay, and uh, you also have climate changes. I think as one of the uh, curriculum minor or what? What is it's it? a elective in economics, uh, economics of climate change. Okay. Uh, yes. Second question I have, uh, does your university also offer uh, MA in economics or post-graduation in economics if the child wants to uh, do that later? Does your university offer MA? Must, does it also have post-graduate course in economics? I mean, whether it is Bhopal campus or Bangalore campus? Yes, it is there in the uh, Bangalore campus. We have been running it for the three last three and four years uh, with very good placements of our students. Okay, and do you give any preference or any reservation of seats or weightage to the students who your own students who have passed <laughs> out from all your own university? It's uh, an open yeah. entrance for everyone. It's it's an open entrance. Huh? It's it's an open entrance. Okay, okay. Many of them have uh, some of somebody some of them have gone out, worked elsewhere, and then come back. You know, sometimes they feel that you know they've got a good flavor of economics through the undergraduate program so they necessarily don't find the need to do a master's again here right okay. so but we do have both have happened uh, people have after ba they've gone abroad actually to do their 
they will have specific interest in uh, development economics or as i said ecological economics and do do london school or a warwick to do a, a pg program but some of them do come here also right so, but, but, but we don't have a reservation as we don't have a yeah it's not a direct integrated program there's no direct entry they have to uh, go through that yeah and the last question is uh, the refund policy i just said in the chat that it has mentioned as per the new ugc policy can you throw light on it yeah, i mean it's nothing it's not new it's the old uh, ugc policy the thing is see let me put it this way right i mean uh, is it i are, are you somebody who's uh, applying now for round 2 correct no my daughter has got admission in ba economics honors in the bangalore campus right then see the thing is round 1 the way we look at round 1 is for people who are clear that azim prem ji university is one of their top choices right Yes. Right. So when you ask me ref the refund the thing, then it this clearly means that you're looking at many other options also. See, so if you're looking at some three, four, five, six options, second round is the best time. Now, nevertheless, since you asked me the question, now we will have a joining date for round one candidates. So, for example, the joining date for round one candidates will be say May fifteenth. I'm just ma I'm, uh, making it up here, May fifteenth. Okay. If you pay the fees now, and if you let us know that you're going to withdraw by May fifteenth, some one week or two weeks before May fifteenth, we will just okay. refund the entire money. by keeping some uh, processing charges which could be 5 to 10000 rupees okay beyond that may 15 then the percentage that you get back will be more that is the ugc policy okay i mean the, the amount that would be deducted would be more than 5000 or 10 correct 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 then the ugc says that if it's if it's after the declared the joining date of may 15th if it is after 10 days you can declare uh, deduct 25% if it's after 15 days you can declare 50% after 30 days no refund so there's a slab that we can uh, we will. it's there on the uh, public domain the oh. ugc guideline that's what we go go with now what i don't know now at this point of time is the joining date for round one candidates with the admission committee will decide very soon the calendar is okay. getting ready i mean we are more or less we know when the classes would start you know so we, we would be informed we would be mailed about it then sure sure sure, sure, sure. Uh, but at this point of time to accept the offer you have to pay the first semester whatever uh, is the uh, that is fine that is fine correct 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 thank you no problem yeah now yeah. Uh, bindu and then kiran and then we'll have to close up very quickly because there is another session a very interesting session starting at 6 o'clock again on economics uh, but yeah Uh, good afternoon my sorry good evening my name is praveen i'm covering for bindu i'm yeah yeah, yeah yeah so uh, she's studying 12th in uh, economics commerce uh, and business studies now um please treat me as an illiterate in the subject so my questions a couple of questions would be uh, uh dumb questions maybe so who may i know who drafts the curriculum in your university your faculty members or you have uh, collaborations with some other universities you, you, you want to Hanaya, this is drafted by our uh, people only so we have uh, but uh, at bangalore uh, so we have a set of uh, 15 to 20 people uh, some of them are very renowned economists uh, and they have jointly drafted the entire program okay and what would be the intake in bangalore campus uh, for ba economics for the academic year So, so we this, are running two sections. Ah, uh, sorry, yeah, Rajiv. That's good. that's correct. That's correct. So we are running two sections. So thirty-five, thirty-five, seventy is the intended intake. Okay. At Bangalore, yeah. Okay, and uh, do you support for finding internships in outside companies? Ah, uh, yes, we will provide ah uh, support. Ah, uh, so there will be a committee which will be like have a list of ah. Uh, uh internship uh, organizers and they can put you in the put the students in touch with depending on their interest uh but they can also find on them or like if they find something else which is different that is also okay but we will have a a proper uh, system in place okay thank you so um okay here is my dumb questions i know i know i have high regard for uh, economists i have seen like people like manmohan singh chandrababu naidu who made great impact now how i'm trying to imagine a, an economist you know who have studied me economics how can i imagine him or where can i imagine him in in a public service for example in a government job or in a corporate sector where do they fit um you know i know it's a dumb question yeah 
No, so where do you do you, they fit money? Whether they got get jobs or not? What what exactly are you trying to ask? So they uh, so they will like in for example in corporates, uh, uh, they are generally taken uh, a lot of economist work for different kind of services and some more in specific type of corporate, some less in different kind of corporate. But there are always economists on board. In government sector also, uh, one is through the services. You clear the either the state public services or the, the uh, IS and you go through that. But apart from that also, there are always like there are our students who have gone as consultants in, in Andhra Pradesh government and Karnataka government. So uh, they do work there. I don't know if that answers your question. Okay, like in a consultant, but not uh, uh, besides the public service exams, there is no specific uh, uh, designation. So it, 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 for, yeah. Sita, I'll, can I just come in? Yeah. See, yeah. The, the, when you when you look at people who have done social sciences, right? Right. You have to think beyond job in a service industry. Right. You know, understand? I don't know I mean, whether you're in the tech field. I think you're we're kind of the, the, the imagination, I've worked in uh, in, a, in an IT firm for a long time. We had to think beyond the manufacturing industry and the IT industry. There are plenty of roles where economics is required. For, let me give an example, and you can look at an organization called Center for Monitoring Indian Economy, CMIE. Okay. Right, which, which I don't know how many people have heard in the country, but the kind of cutting edge analysis that CMIE does. They may have the employment data, which probably much, much more nuanced data than the government has. Okay. So the graduates are working there. Okay. The graduates could be working in a, in, a, in a company called Foundation for Ecological Security, just for example, FES Foundation for Ecological Security, doing some analysis of impact analysis of did this government policy scheme, how much money did they spend, how, what impact did it make? They may be doing some uh, policy impact evaluation. Right. So a lot of jobs that's out there with the economics is silently working without coming on the front page of the newspaper. Right. So, so those jobs are not visible, you know, uh, obviously. That's not... correct. That's correct. So yeah. because we are, when, when I've been in that for the, until the age of 40, I was, we, we are blinded in that, in that world. We, I was. Right. Wherein right. this, this fantastic work that a social scientist or a political economist or an economist is doing. Right. It's very silently done. Right. <laughs> yeah, but the, it, <clears throat> most of the, most of the government schemes that is coming out, probably what is uh, based on the, work that has been done by other in the public services or by a good civil society organization. Right. right. So but if they're, not the visible, of, yeah, if they're not visible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not. They don't, it's they, it's they, hard they to get the motivation, you know. <laughs> that's correct. That's something which I keep telling whenever I meet them to talk about more about your work. Right. They, they're, they're not in too much into the, uh, you know, uh, what do you call that? Uh, they, they don't talk too much about their work, but there is there is enough enough job for economists. We, we we at least we should be aware that there is work, you know. Oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, do or you if think I, if I if I take one more, I can I can go on on this topic like World Resources Institute WRI. Right. right. If, if those kind of institution, how do I make BMTC? I don't know where you're calling from. How do I make BMTC profitable? Right. You need to do a complete analysis, and there an economist will be required. It's not. I mean, if you believe that there is no, or if you believe that there is techno managerial solution for everything, then maybe an economist is not required. We're talking right. about a world where we need to come up with solution, maybe a philosophical viewpoint, an economist viewpoint, a sociologist viewpoint, and then design solution. Economist is required everywhere. Uh, yeah, you you said it right. Yeah. Right. Um, so, do you think these guys, uh, I mean, MA economics student, will find opportunities in financial firms like, let's say, Goldman Sachs, Citibank? Do they? That's the, that's the easy one. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That that is the like the the places where economists go and do work. Yeah. Uh, but they, for example, they also some of our students have uh, worked with World Bank and and stuff. So that's other like international uh, think tanks, international development agencies. Uh, so you don't have to go to like specific places. You can go anywhere. Uh, okay. It depends on the interest of the student. Okay. So the, the reason behind is you know my kid is in a dilemma whether to go in the BA route or uh, BBA route you know so so uh, so as many kids so uh, I'm trying to explore you know I'm I'm encouraging her to go towards a specific can we do MBA after BA is that a possibility yes right yes 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 okay. yeah yeah so that is why I'm I'm trying to 
take her the uh, BA route because MBA can be done anytime in later, you know, anytime later. So, uh, all right, you know, that's all I have. Thank you very much, uh, everyone. You know, Raj Gopal, Avinash, Sunit, and uh, Shuli. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So you can be in this meeting. I need to leave uh, for the next meeting, but yeah, I think there are more fine. questions coming in. And then I... so we'll uh, like finish this and then move to that. Yeah, yeah I think uh, Kiran, you've already asked, right? Kiran has asked, I think. I had one more, but if the others want to ask, okay, I'll sure, lower my hand. Sure. Right sure. Should I give someone else a chance and lower my hand? Uh, yeah, Naya, uh, I think Naya's also asked once. Maybe you can go and then we can take the next one. Okay, so just quickly, what are the portions in the money, bank, and finance? Does it cover accounting and stock markets? Or... Uh, no, a little bit on that, but not more on how does the, the monetary system works, uh, uh, how does the financial, uh, so a little bit uh, definitely on how do financial markets work, but that has other parts as well, also about like capital inflows, outflows, uh, exchange rates, uh, interaction between exchange rate, interest rate, inflation rate, those sort of things as well. So mm -hmm. some part Nothing on, on stock market. Per. Yeah, but not on accounting per se. Definitely on stock okay. market and financial market. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I think you have a question. Do you want to ask now? Uh, good evening, ma'am. Yeah. Hi. Good evening. I have two questions. Uh, yes. First, uh, what is the difference between BA and BSc economics? Uh, there's not much difference. It's, it's just that some institutes would like to give it, a, say, like economics is a part of science, so BSc degree, some places it's a part of art, so a BA degree, but there's no, not, no other difference. And it's not recognized as a, like, it's not that BSc in economics is treated better in the job market versus BA in economics. No such thing. Okay. Uh, and is there an exit option in the third year? Can we leave in third year? Yes, you yes, can, but is. it will... Sorry, Sunit. Yes, please. Oh, yes, there is an exit option, but we usually uh, encourage students to complete the four-year degree and uh, four-year honors program, but there is an exit option. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, Laya Krishnashankar, you have another question, I think. Do you want to go ahead? Yeah, I did. Uh, so the school curriculum for like the 11th and 12th grades are designed to have a very like theoretical approach to the subject, right? So um, at, at Azim, would we have like the opportunity to explore like more like in the real world aspect, so to speak? Meaning understand it like on a deeper level. Uh, definitely. Yeah, so that's... Yeah, Sunit, please Sorry. go ahead. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah, that's the thing which I think makes our program... Uh, a little different from others so we do uh, so a lot of our courses actually use indian data sets but we also have field courses we also expect our students to go to the field and observe uh, so for example if it's markets we don't expect you to sit and only read about markets we actually expect you to understand how markets are working around you be it the land market be it the credit market or any other consumer choice so you have a lot of options to actually be uh, be a part of the economy around you and then understand it instead of just um, using the classroom as a space. So that's something we actually encourage quite a lot uh, in our as part of our curriculum. Oh, the answer to thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, is, does anybody else want to ask any question? I have one last question, uh, Bindu's yeah. father. Is rural economy a subject uh, in, in our curriculum? Uh, so it's not a subject, but we have we have an elective on agrarian economics, and a lot of other papers use uh, data from uh, rural economies, rural credit, or employment situation, or poverty outcomes. So it's covered in that form, and also in Indian economy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.